Hello everybody, this is Nagraj. Today we will learn about datasets, data loaders and transforms in PyTorch. PyTorch provides all standard datasets needed for machine learning. You can easily learn about PyTorch datasets by going through this tutorial and follow the simple instructions provided here. Simply go to Google and type PyTorch datasets and click on the first link that you get. And here you see many many different datasets provided by PyTorch. First one I see the MNIST dataset. You can click on this and it's very simple to use this. Similarly, there are many other datasets that you can look at like uh, Fashion MNIST, uh, Fake Data, Coco datasets, Yelson. You can explore with all these datasets and with this in background we will go back to Jupyter Notebook. Okay, here is a Jupyter Notebook and I would need a standard import like Torvision, Torch, OS, Matplotlib.pyplot, SPLT and NumPy. I'm just getting the current working directory here. I also need to define the directory path. Okay. And here I have a small function which converts uh, tensors to NumPy because I would be needing this to plot the images. Okay, and we'll see that later. Three steps are important here. First is compose the transform. Uh, I compose the transform by calling the function transforms.compose from TorchVision. Okay, so this has resize defined here. I want to resize the images to 256 by 256. And we want to convert them to tensors because all my models need tensors and we also want to normalize the image because all our models would require the normalized numbers the general images would have numbers anywhere from 0 to 255 but we want only from 0 to 1 okay so this will create the transform let me run this okay so i can quickly check how that looked like transform image Okay, so this is how it looks like. Then I would get the data set. Let me create the data set. So I'm calling the standard MNIST function, torchvision.dataset.mnist that we saw here, which is this. Okay. So I just called it and we need the directory path here because this is where it's going to download the images. I'm setting the train equals to true because I want the train part of the data set. Transform should be set here. This is the same transform that we created here. We need to set it to that. Okay, when I call this, it is going to create the data set MNIST train. Okay, quickly we can check the data set. Okay, set MNIST train. Okay, and uh, it is a list. So I can get actually get zero. I can get one. So we created the transform then we created the data set now we i want to create the data loader because we want an iterable uh, data loader okay so this is accomplished by calling task.utils.data.dataloader and here we need to do the same data set that we created here that's a list of data set and batch size we need to mention the batch size because we don't want to deal with one data item per iteration we need to deal with the uh, batch size like 32 16 or 8 because that is much faster than dealing with only one image at a time okay so we'll run this okay so now we have created all three and let's check the data here we are creating an iterable to the data loader okay and we do a next so i should be getting a batch of images and classes okay and what i'm doing is i'm creating a grid from the images because i want i want to print all the images together because the batch will have 16 or 32 images you want to print only one image okay so let's run this and uh, so i get a batch of 32 images uh, each of one channel 256 cross 256 pixels and my out should be a concatenated image okay which is 3 cross uh, 1034 
by 2066 pixels and 3 is the number of channels you, you see that it has converted one channel to three channels okay so now we'll convert them to numpy because we want to print them this is the numpy and uh, when i print it i will get all the mnist images which is wonderful okay and let me print the labels okay which is classes the classes that we got here okay so the classes that we got here which is this and let's print that and you should have class for each of the image so we should have 7294 something 7254 okay 7254 7205 7254 okay so this is how you deal with mnist data set let's go to the next data set which is called fashion mnist and everything is same here except uh, the data set itself which is fashion mnist Every, all the other procedure will remain same so I'll quickly run this and here the batch is 8 okay so I should get 8 images so I got 8 images here of fashion uh, mnist and they all have classes so we're printing the classes here 162370 okay so let's go to one more data set which is called SBU data set again you can get that from here go to target vision and then type SBU here here and uh, this is the way it's called I'm exactly using the same way and download the SBU data set okay so one change here is that everything is going to be same same procedure directory path also can be same just that uh, the number of channels are three here because these are colored images okay that's the reason we our transform will slightly change okay uh, all the three steps of transforms are same except the normalization it is giving three channels one two three so we are giving so we are giving mean and standard deviation for three channels uh, you note that in the earlier exercise we had given mean and normalization for only one channel okay that's the only difference everything else is same let me run this and uh, we created a batch of eight uh, data loader and uh, let me get one item from data loader and see how it looks okay so here we have got many different images and let, let us look at it closer and we have uh, different images and if I print the classes and I see that the classes are not just the object name but they are sentences okay and this looks like a image captioning data set where images are given and a caption is mentioned so your algorithm can actually learn to caption new images okay so let's go to the next data set which is called image folder and note that this is not a data set it is a local image folder okay so i have created a local image folder here okay so c colon users asus hymenoptera data okay i will quickly show you this okay so this is the folder that i've created it has internally train and validation uh, folders so let me go to train folder and it has again two folders ants and bees okay so this is very important to have this structure so let me go to ants and i'll see n number of ant images and if i go to bees it will have n number of bees pictures okay so internally what PyTorch is going to do is it will create a train data set and validation data set based on these folders okay and it will label images based on the folder names ants and bees okay this is the images inside this will have ants label and images inside bees will have bees label okay this is a fundamental principle in uh, image folder this is very important okay so the remaining procedures are same okay so I need to create a transform uh, here when I'm creating the data set only difference is instead of calling a data set from PyTorch uh, APIs I call torchvision.datasets.image folder and here I need to give the directory path okay because I want train so I'm giving a directory path as train and transform is same as transform image okay and here again I am creating a data loader based on those images which is similar to earlier what we did I run this and I get 
uh, wonderful images of ants and bees uh, which are created from the local image folder and we have now a data loader that can be used for training your network and it also has classes let's see what the classes will be classes should be ideally 0 and 1 only so we have a batch of 8 images so we should have a batch of 8 labels which is 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 so 1 and 0 would correspond to ants and bees okay so this is all I wanted to show you today and this is very important in your future exercises okay thank you very much for watching this